We're going to do a little tutorial uh, where we're going to go through how I made the last set of uh, scenes that I actually made with Blender and Photoshop and Incarnate and a whole bunch of tools. So the two scenes I want to show you is this one, this Nautilus crash site from, uh, this is actually from uh, Call from the Deep, which is a module that you can get on the DMs Guild. And uh, it's a crashed illithid spaceship, right? It's a crashed nautiloid. Uh, and there's a lot going on here. It's a big scene, but it's basically just a big reveal because this is a major threat in the world. And the players start not really knowing anything except that there's probably some illithid involved mine flares and uh, uh, I've got the interior here which they explored. I hand drew that. I'm not super happy with that how that turned out so that's kind of inspired me to learn a little bit more about blender modeling and whatnot but let me let me hide this and move it aside. So what you've got here is you know some incarnate background with a foreground element. It's a big prop something that's more complicated than what I would really be comfortable hand drawing but what I was able to do is just go to Google and say you know nah Nautiloid STL, right? And so I went to the looking for lithid Nautiloid STL. Usually it's like the very first link. <laughs> you know, this stuff is so easy to find. Um, and someone printed to uh, my mini factory where somebody had kit bashed. So it's actually this. Somebody had kit bashed uh, some stuff that was modeled probably for a games workshop, game simulation, you know, Facsimile and uh, not kind of a Nautilus shell and maybe something from uh, You know 20,000 leagues under the sea, right? So that's a submarine from 20,000 leagues under the sea and put this all together and turned it into like a Nautilus spaceship Nautiloid spaceship very spell jammery um, And so that's cool. And so you download this model So here's the you know the Nautilus spaceship as an STL but in order to import this all I had to do is jump over into blender Go file, import data, STL, and then navigate to wherever I've got that Nautilus, which is right here. Import it, and now I've got a gigantic Nautiloid, which uh, I'm actually a lot bl better blender now than I was when I when I made this a couple of months ago. So let's default del uh, delete the default cube, and uh, let me find my camera. Then I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to go into its transformation here and say that the camera is rotated at. What was it? Fifty-four point seven three six, something like that, and that the camera is at forty-five degrees. And then I'm going to take this viewport, look at it from the viewport's perspective, go to the camera, turn it into an ortho orthogonal camera, move the camera around, and then you know mess with the orthogonal scale so that I got a bigger, basically, uh, field to print on. And uh, the camera is from the scene that I want. I think the problem is the camera is just not far away enough. So I'm going to go to the camera view with the camera selected, transforming in the local space, G, Z, to move the camera backwards in the camera space. Now I'm not messing with the clip plane at all. That's reasonable. Clip plane, meter's fine, and then, you know, one. One kilometer's better there. So now I can take this nautiloid and transform it in some reasonable fashion. Though I think I'm going to do global and I'm going to reset its transform, reset its rotation. So let's rotate it along the Z axis. Right, and then rotate it along the, the X axis here to kind of put it on its side. Which side? I can pick any side I want. So I think I wanted to sort of get the top down view, move it here. And like using the camera to compose the shot just kind of get a good background plate here and so then all I had to do there was you know look at it what it looked like in the renderer that was okay but I really needed some lighting so let's take the existing light move it around and uh, Thousand watts isn't enough because this is a massive ship. And then Shift D to duplicate that, just to create some lighting. And then you know this is the this is the image that I made very similarly, uh, though I probably spent more time lighting it. And and now that I know more about Blender than I did back a couple of months ago when I made this, I would have backlit it and did a three point lighting setup, 
or maybe put you know found a, an HDRI of you know some real outdoor lights and tried to get it to match whatever my background was. But this is what I made, um, and I could go and I do a really nice you know uh, render of this using the ray tracing engine. Um, but uh, that that's what I made. Now I think uh, when I actually generated this, I took the image and I used it as a stencil over in our incarnate chapter two folder where I've got this thing here. Yeah, so I just had the black and white render of this up and ready to go and I built all the stuff that went around it, including the dirt trail, um, right, that, that was all around it. So I just built, you know, the, the, the trees and the ground and, and all these things are in the background layer, right? Um, and you know painted in the sort of the crashed you know the um you know the trail that had made in the sand here um but i didn't really like that this was green in 3d so i actually took it into my tablet um i have a, I have a like an ipad pro with a pencil and procreate and i just traced some outlines and i shaded it in and i did a i did a job up on it in photoshop i'm trying to find the file for that in Photoshop, but the, the end result was, you know, a grid um, and then some traced outlines here, right, and some coloration that I, I think I just did with an airbrush in Photoshop at this point. I just did it by hand. Um, it, you know, I don't, I don't think I would necessarily have to do that. This took a lot of time, um, but I got this hand-drawn kind of sketchy look. Uh, just by doing it by hand, I just kind of traced over it, but you can still see that the original render, though I may have shaded it purple and blue and green, uh, the original render is still under there. So I didn't, you know, the perspective looks really nice and looks really isometric because I was able to use Blender to do that. So that, that's it. That's the, the Nautilus scene. They did go inside of it and, you know, fight some bad guys, and that was a lot of fun. Let's move on to the next scene. And the next scene was a shipwreck. So the, the end result over in Foundry... Uh, let me jump over to my foundry. So the end result is a actually a multi-layer map where I've got the ship at the bottom of the ocean, um, and uh, you, know, you get some god rays, right? You know the the blooming light rays coming through the water, and I've got all four decks of the boat uh, up and going. So I've got you know here's the the fork, you know the back castle of the boat, but there's a door, and you can get into this wizard's sort of chambers here, though of course all of his stuff has fallen down. So there's some epic isometric tiles uh, that I used uh, just in Foundry as tiles for some props. Like this turns into a mimic, or there's a bed in here, something in here turns into a mimic, I can't remember what. And then I've got a render of a, this is actually Vecna uh, from MZ4250, but I'm just using him as a wizard for now because that works just fine. Uh, and then um, I've got props, a giant crab, I've got all this stuff going. But how did I make this? Well, you can see I'm using the same technique. That's a 3D rendered boat. And uh, I went with a tablet and I kind of cartoonized it a little bit and drew in some, some layers there. Um, but the light was new, right? The light and the water was new. I'm still messing with how to do that. I went to a tutorial on how to do an ocean box. I'm... So I went to this tutorial from Obi-Wan uh, and he had, uh, you know, you know, information on how to build the light texture for that. But he also had in Blender Market, I was able to just go, well, when I guess after logging into this, I was able to go buy for a couple of bucks this here um, because, uh, well, it only cost a few bucks and this was going to take me many, many, many hours to learn how to do. And that's the benefit of having a creator market here where I was able to buy this texture and then bring it into a scene uh, to use for me. So then uh, from there, I messed around with a bit and I found a, uh, I found like a model for 3D printing, right? Of a pirate ship and assembled it sort of in pieces uh, of the STLs of all the different decks that came apart, which was really nice because then I could uh, easily do what I wanted. And that's an MZ4250 Kraken. So this is just a, a shot that I made for my Instagram as a test. Um, but then, uh, when I put it at the bottom inside the water and put the camera inside the water so that the index of refraction of the water didn't sort of distort it too much, I got this really beautiful light coming in of the, the sort of the volume rendering of the water and the light and the caustics. You know, the sand texture is not great and there's a seam there because I think that's actually the edge of the water and this is it, 
the water reflecting back in because it's sort of like self-reflective due to the index of refraction. Um, not the greatest simulation, but I got this working. This isn't the greatest, you know, the boats in my world don't have cannons, so it didn't make sense that it had gun ports. So I just kind of told my players to ignore that. But when I put it together in Photoshop, it worked great. So uh, I think in Photoshop here, this is the actual composite um, of the different layers. So let me go through the layers. So I've got all four rendered decks of this laid out in this layer, but then I've got the uh, like a brightness and contrast modifier so that it like looks a little bit more blue and a little bit more under the water. And I just kind of did that in post in Photoshop. And then there's also this, uh, this background line work that I imported in as a layer from Procreate. And I just hand drew that. Um, and then you put it all together and uh, I was able to rig in Foundry. Let me go back over to Foundry. And I was able to rig in Foundry and rig all the walls, right? So that the players would have to explore this layer by layer. Right, and I was able I was able to rig um, all, all the walls of the scene, including you know the alternate entrance that the players did did decide not to go and take out this huge group of Sahaguin, uh, they and go through the main entrance. They decided to sneak around back, and they picked one of these windows to come in, and then dealt with. The giant crab, which was fun, um, and so that was a bunch of good fights. They almost got dis uh, killed by the Sahaguin Baron. This image, I think, is taken from Pathfinder. I just grabbed it off Google for, yeah, and uh, you know they had a, a bunch of rolling fights, but like right around here was the kill spot because they ended up having you know aggroing half the dungeon, and uh, and I thought there's a creative scene, you know, a little bit neater than the dungeon. Um, I, I changed the layout based on the materials that I had. Uh, but it turned into a really fun fight, and uh, I think the players enjoyed it. It was kind of the first test of using 3D stuff from Blender in the game. Uh, I thought it went okay. I, I, I just, uh, if I were to do anything differently, it would be to actually use uh, more of an isometric grid and think about how the uh, this was room to room, and you know, would you aggro the whole dungeon? And that was a bit of strategy, and they had to think through that. So I like that. But I think inside the actual rooms, I would do more by having some of these you know, crates aligned with the grid and make it clear how much room they had to navigate. Sort of the 3D combat is still tough, so I'm going to have to work on you know, some of the dungeon design to figure out that. All right. Fun stuff. Thanks, everybody.